Hey y'all, I'm back with a DIY embellishment video and this time I'm going to be creating pinwheels inspired by both the pier and confetti collections. And I started with some squares that are cut at, at different sizes. I chose like 2x2, two two, I think 3x3, three three, and then a few sizes in between. And you can really do them at any size you want depending on what your project is. You can make them huge if you're, make, if you're doing them for party decor. But I mostly just use these, or will be using these for scrapbooking. So... Um, or for cards. So I think the smaller ones do work better. I'm starting by grabbing one of my squares and I just simply drew an X with um, a pencil and I'm cutting it about three-fourths of the way to the center at each corner. And I'll do this a few times at this speed so you guys will be able to see what I'm doing. I'm going to add some adhesive in the middle and then simply fold one of the corners in and then I'm going to skip that next corner and then go to the next one. So every, basically every other little corner I'm just folding right into the center. So I did that more of an origami style where it's just folded down completely and it's flat. And I actually like those. Those aren't traditional pinwheels, but I like the way that those turned out because I think that they work good for scrapbooking pages or for cards, especially if you're going to be mailing them. I'll do this one the exact same way and then I'll show you some more traditional styles and then I'll show you some where I stepped them up a notch where I added some layers and those are actually the la the last ones I do are my favorite and that's normally how it works. So I did the same exact thing just added some adhesive in the middle and then folded um, every other little corner up or every other little notch up and I'm just rubbing off the ex excess adhesive. I'm going to do this a, couple, a few more times. Actually, you guys are going to see this entire process, and but some of it will be sped up a little bit faster. Um, this time, so if you noticed, I only used the pencil for the first one because I was like, I can just uh, eyeball this. And I did that on every single other one, and it was totally fine. So you do not have to use a pencil or a ruler unless you want to be super precise. So this one's a little bit more traditional, but one thing you have to keep in mind about keeping them not or not folding those folds flat is that it's a little bit harder to glue down and the glue doesn't really stay as good so using like a brad or something and I'll show you that process but using the brad um, will really help all those pieces stay put in the middle. I'll do this one the same exact way and like I said I'm cutting each corner about three-fourths of the way. I'm going to add some adhesive in the middle. You can use any adhesive that you really want. And then I'm just going to fold without completely flattening those. I'm going to fold them up into the center and then add some hot glue to keep it um, put in the, or to, so that it will stay put in the center. And then I'm sure I burn myself here in a second. I'm pretty sure I do. And they're not decorated. So these are very simple right now, but I'm going to decorate them here in a second. I'm just setting them aside right now. I think that's where I burned myself actually. Um, so you have to be really careful with that. So like I said, the flat ones are much easier to do because you don't, they're, they're, they just, I mean, they're folded. So they stay with these, they're folded to where they have, um, they had the point just touches in the center. And so that's basically the, all the weight is on those folds, if that makes sense. So the point has to like stay put. And so these I'm doing very traditional too, but I'm trying to make them stay put. And so here I've realized, okay, I need to, if I'm going to do these traditional to where the point is just touching the, in, in the center and they're not actually flat, I'm going to go ahead and add an enamel dot so that it'll hold those down. And I love, and you'll see the difference that it makes when you add the centers of these. And I'm going to add centers to all of them. And then I'm going to go back and decorate some of them even, even further. So I've sped up the process quite a bit here so you guys can see, um, so you don't get bored with just seeing me do the same thing over and over again. But I'm just kind of showing you some of them, and then I'm going to decorate these first few, and then I'm going to continue with the um, rest of my pattern papers. And I'm going to uh, sew some of them. I'm going to layer up some of them. I'm doing the same thing with the, even this little bitty tiny small one, just adding some adhesive in the middle. And I kind of brought it closer up to the camera so that you guys can see. And I actually didn't obviously think of this on my own. Several people have done tutorials on these, and I didn't really know how to do them, but I wanted to kind of um, do my own take on them. And so I looked up, oh, I cannot think. It's like easy pinwheel tutorial or something like that and um I found it I found one on like I said on YouTube and learned how to do it and then of course I wanted to make it a little bit more um I guess I like simple but I wanted to step it up just a little bit further so I'm showing you guys different ways that you can really actually 
uh, decorate these pin walls so that they can be more detailed for your scrap of pages. There's where I'm punching a, a little or uh, pricking a hole in the center and then putting a brad. And those brads I've had for a long time, probably since we got them maybe possibly in a hip kit a long time ago. I just never knew what to do with brads. And now that I, I've started to make these, I really find that the brads work perfect because they hold the centers much better than enamel dots. So I do add brads to, I think like maybe two or three, and then I go back and then with the last few, I just flatten them out completely. And, um, I sew on them, which holds nicely. And then I add some different types of centers and embellishments and things on top. So you guys will see those as we go. So here's where I'm like, I'm just going to flatten out the rest of these because I think that they look great both ways. I think the traditional pinwheels are so cute. And these origami ones, you, you have to kind of, you know, they kind of throw you off as they're just sitting there without anything on top of them because they do look very like math origami-ish. I don't know how else to explain that. But once you um, add the embellishments on top, it really makes a huge difference. So I'm going to fold these all up and then flatten them out completely. And then um, I'm going to add some embellishments right on top. So we'll get to that here in a second. And you'll see that I cut those down because I realized I didn't have as many small ones as I wanted. And so keep in mind that using double-sided paper is important for this project if you want, obviously, to see um, I sewed on those, by the way, if you want to see both, or because you'll be seeing both sides of the pattern paper, or both sides of the paper. So I'm just going to add some embellishments right on top. I found some gold um, glitter stickers, and those are from the Wonder Collection, and then just a little punch butterfly from my video the other day. I had some left over, and then I add these snap fray stickers right on top, and that one's kind of, that one's just a little bit different. I'm going to add do I add that? I don't think I add that uh, paper clip, but I do add two paper clips on a couple of other ones. So here's where I'm going to continue with this process. I did slow this down a little bit so you guys could see this. And these happen to be my favorite ones just because they are um, not super traditional just because I add a little bit more. And I'm sure there's other people that have done this before. Um, but I kind of just took, put my own spin on it. And those are normally the ones that I uh, end up really liking. And this one, I'm just using the hydrangea punch from Martha Stewart that I'm in love with. And I'm going to punch two different pattern papers, just scraps that were sitting on my desk. I'm going to add those together. And then I'm going to add an enamel, enamel dot right on top and then, or actually a sequin right on top. And then I'm going to put that in the center. And that's my absolute favorite one out of this whole bunch. And then I'm going to punch just my own little circle for the center of this one, add that right in the middle, and then add a fray sticker right on top, and then a paper clip right on top of that. And I think I pretty much finished with that, and I'm going to show you guys some close-ups here at the end, but if you guys have any questions, I know this is super simple, but super fun, and you can make a bunch at one time. And these are those embellishments, like the standouts from Crate Paper, that really can get expensive. So if you buy them, that's awesome. I buy them too. But if you run out, then you don't have to worry about hoarding them. So have a great uh, rest of the week. I hope your Monday was good. I think it's actually, I think I'm going to post this Tuesday morning. But I hope your guys' Monday was good, and have a great rest of the week.